uh, that we are recording and always check uh, that red button. You can see the red uh, button on my machine. So fungi and uh, technology, please do record also. Okay. Yeah, because we want to keep a profile. Some some of these things we always want to revisit them. If you right, this meeting is being recorded. Got it? Yes. Right. That's good. So it means we are now four people doing the recording. So we can't miss. The okay, so these are the this is the more like a course outline for the program. You can see it's 40 hours, and uh, today what we are going to focus on is mainly uh literature review using the bibliometrics techniques technique. But uh, there are other techniques that uh, we can use uh, in uh, literature review, uh, which uh, include um systematic literature review and uh, meta-analysis. Uh, we just briefly look into this, but uh, our focus today is on... Uh, um, okay, uh, Madam Jamanda is reminding us to mute our mics for our skipping issues. Thank you. So, uh, today we are going to focus on this quantitative method of, uh, uh, of reviewing literature. Remember, last time we focused on uh, how to come up with the formula, and uh, we went into Scopus to try and find uh, some papers. But today we are going to delve deeper into how to use um, uh, bibliometric data from uh, Scopus. And, uh, I'm sorry to disturb you. Okay. Um, I think I'm excusing myself for the meantime. I'll join you later. Okay, that's all right. <laughs> All right. So I was saying that um, um, we we will focus more. We will delve deeper into um, our review of literature uh, because what we want to do is after formulating our our topic, we want to usually we formulate this topic from uh, assessing what other researchers have done. But uh, during the process of doing that, we also need to, we'll be doing more of like literature collection. And this literature collection, we are saying that uh, there is no point in you uh, trying to, 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 to get to literature that is maybe not performing in the market. Like uh, for instance, where somebody has written a paper in 1980 and it's got only two citations. Uh, sometimes we would say ah, this paper but it's got no impact. It was written, I don't know how many years yeah. ago. That's a, it's, well, from 1980 to now, it's more than what? More than 33 years, I don't, maybe 33 years or something like that. Uh, so, so you will, you, you will see that uh, you would need relevant papers, papers that are making an impact. Unless those papers are current, then you would want to find out um, what is emerging from those current papers. So sometimes if a paper is too current, like if it's from this year or from last year, maybe citations, they are very, they are few, uh, but uh, we would want to... Uh... So uh, we will also go to citation and re referencing styles. Uh, plagiarism and consequences, referencing style, softwares, practical exercises. Uh, then um, if we have got time, we will go to the introduction to research proposal. But I doubt if we are going to have time for that uh, because bibliometrics on its own is a very long, long topic uh, which we need to, to really try to understand. So let's go straight away into bibliometrics we go straight away into the right um can you see my my slide yes all right so basically uh 
I am bringing to you bibliometric analysis um, as a way to review existing papers in your research area. Um, in other words, what you, we are saying is that there is somebody who has got uh, this mic, I think, which is on. Somebody who has got this mic, which is making noise. Takudwa. Mm -hmm. Right, so um, uh, let me run again my slides. Right, so I was saying that bibliometric um, analysis is uh, is a quantitative method of uh, doing a literature, performing a literature review. In other words, what we are saying is when you have um, uh, you are confronted with so much literature a lot of literature um, in a, a particular area, but you can't easily find gaps. Please, if you are joining in, uh, make sure that you close uh, you, you close your mic. You you bring in some sounds that keep us keep disturbing us. So this uh, bibliometric analysis is a quantitative method. What it uh, what it does it you use bibliometric data. So bibliometric data is basically those. Um, like uh, the bibliograph of um, of uh, authors. Uh, so bibliograph of authors includes uh, things like the names of the authors, the year of publication, the, uh, the journal in which the articles were published, the financiers or the sponsors of the uh, articles, uh, like in some areas, in some countries, uh, they you get research funding from different institutions. Uh, for example, in uh, in China, there is the Natural Science uh, Social Science Foundation, which gives you funding for any research that you'll be doing. So you recognize those in the bibliometric uh, the data. Even the universities, who are the affiliations uh, in in which uh, uh, in which universities are the authors affiliated? So all that is part of bibliometric data. But this data, uh, whilst uh, you can use it, might, some can use it for performance analysis, some for science map mapping, then there is the data, you can also use it for network analysis. When we are talking about performance analysis, we are simply saying, for instance, if it's a journal, we are saying, how is this journal performing in this area? So we, we, we what we do is when we do our, our, our search, our bibliometric search, uh, data search, uh, we will know from the analysis that... Uh, for example, the Journal of uh, uh, Accounting Technology and uh, Accounting Technology, Accounting and Technology uh, is performing better than other that may be in the area of artificial intelligence. So we will know that. We will also know uh, which authors are performing in that area. We will also know uh, which uh, financiers are financing more in this kind of research. So this will help us later on. Uh, when we do science mapping, we will then be able to uh, look to come up with the themes that are emerging from uh, this kind of research. So, what is uh, it, bibliometric? Um, bibliometric. So, this application of quantitative te techniques, um, for example, bibliometric analysis is about citation analysis uh, on bibliometric data, uh, which is units of publication and citations. So, uh, before we talk about uh, we go, we delve uh, deeper into this um um uh into the bibliometric analysis we we look at uh, this uh, conceptualization by don to et al uh don to et al they came up with um, uh, a classification of uh, uh the three major uh, review methods the one first one is bibliometric analysis followed by meta-analysis. So bibliometric analysis, the one that we are looking at today, then meta-analysis, then systematic literature review. But uh, you will find that the differences in this is what each of them is meant to achieve and maybe the size of data that is required. So when we talk about bibliometric analysis, we are talking about uh, quantitative analysis, which requires a lot of data. You need, if you have got, um, if an area there's so much that uh, uh, papers published in that area, then it qualifies for bibliometric data. And some, they say around maybe 500 articles, say about 500, 300 to 500 articles is sufficient for you to perform a bibliometric 
analysis. Then um, uh, for meta analysis, uh, it also requires some large size data. Um, then uh, systematic literature review, we can deal with when you are using a very small quantity data, but there are also like the goals. Uh, for example, bibliometric analysis uh, summarizes large quantities of bibliometric data to present the state of the intellectual structure and emerging trends of a research topic or field. Right, you remember if one of the issues that you are confronted with when you're coming up with the research is they always ask you to come up with, to identify gaps. And this is one of the most difficult things for people to identify gaps. Uh, researchers find it difficult to identify gaps because uh, they don't, probably you have no idea about which, how many publications have been published in this area and what have authors looked at already. So when you perform a bibliometric analysis, you'll be able to actually unravel the uh, intellectual structure uh, of uh, research that has been done and also what the emerging trends are. So during that process, you can identify in gaps that have been left out by uh, previous researchers. And also they can, some of them can inform you on uh, possible areas of uh, future research, which is where you come in now, because you are looking at uh, coming up with the, um, something new. So you, you, you are making an assessment that already this has been done, that has been done, this one has been done, but these uh, researchers are recommending this, you could do this. So it means that you can actually develop your research from what, from the, uh, from the recommendations uh, of, of further research from previous authors. So then when you are doing meta-analysis, you are summarizing the empirical evidence of relationships between variables while uncovering relationships not studied in existing studies. So what happens is that when you're doing a meta-analysis, you what you are doing is simply to find the relationships that have been discovered already by previous authors. So when you have done that, you then also have a chance to review, uh, to, to, to come up with, to, to actually come up with uh, uh, your own relationships uh, that have been built but you have not been exposed by previous researchers. But you can actually see that the researcher A, B, C, they are like making an insinuation that there is a, a relationship between C and D. So if that exists and there is evidence from maybe four or five researchers, you can then support that through meta-analysis. But uh, remember, we are talking about literature review. And uh, in this case, uh, this is this process. If you do it, whether you do bibliometric analysis or meta analysis, uh, what these methods tell me is that uh, you need to uh, probably learn the three of them because one will give you intellectual structure and imaging trends, the other one will give you existing relationships already and also points to some. Uh, uh, possible relationships that have not existed, that have been told uh, by researchers. So it, the, you can see from the information that uh, you probably get from this, you can actually come up, uh, bring, uh, develop a hypothesis and uh, develop uh, very strong um, uh, uh, literature arguments uh, to support uh, your, your hypothesis development and your conceptual framework. Then you go to the other one, which is a systematic literature review, which summarizes and synthesizes the findings of existing literature on a research topic. So this one, uh, as I said earlier on, it, uh, this is a qualitative method, which uh, requires you to synthesize uh, any findings. You, you are actually summarizing the findings, and then you synthesize those findings uh, of uh, existing literature uh, from a particular field or uh, research uh, research topic. So all these, uh, you, you can then go maybe um, after this lecture, you can look at meta-analysis and try to do meta-analysis, but I'm going to focus more on bibliometric analysis. Um, I will pause for questions at this juncture as I go to the next slide. We are trying to go to the practical part of bibliometric analysis so that you really understand what it is in practical terms. We don't want to uh, load people with memorizing what this is and what that is. But if people see us doing it, then they can easily remember and use 
the skill rather than memorize the definition of bibliometric analysis. Hello, colleagues. Yes, yes, following uh, Doc. Very soon I'll be sending you to groups uh, for discussions. So please, uh, if you don't understand something and if you feel that I should uh, repeat something, kindly advise. Okay. Right. So the structure of bibliometric analysis, here is the structure of bibliometric analysis. Uh, and I again, I refer, I would like to acknowledge um, the work by Dontu et al. It's a very, it's very important that I acknowledge uh, this because I have not uh, uh, written the acknowledgement on the slide. So let me start by acknowledging again the work by Dontu. This is um, what their conceptualization of uh, uh, the structure of bibliometric analysis, um, which says that you've got, uh, you can see on the left side, you've got main techniques. Then on the right side, we've got enrichment uh, techniques. But the, on the main techniques, we've got what we call performance analysis. Then we also have science mapping. Then we have, uh, on the other side, we've got network analysis. Uh, the network metrics, we've got clustering, we've got visualization. Visualization using bibliometrics, ARA, BBXL, GEFI techniques, uh, PAJEC, UNI, UCNET, and uh, VOS Viewer. But uh, for us, we are going to concentrate on VOS Viewer, the last one. And uh, all those softwares are available uh, free of charge um, on the net. And the, the, those are that, that those um, uh, softwares that are here there. Then uh, when it comes to performance analysis, what we are simply doing here, you can see we are dealing with uh, publication uh, related metrics. So this is about total publications. We want to see how many publications are, are, are related to the, our area of start. And we want to see who, uh, who authored those, who have co-authored those, like uh, co-authoring, like I can say, Maybe one of you guys, we write a paper together and then in a specific area, something like that. A number of active years of publication, public, uh, productivity per active year of publication. Then we also have uh, citation related metrics, which is total citations, average citations. So these are basically um, like, like uh, when a paper is cited, what it means is that you write a paper, you publish it in the journal, and some people write their article, then they cite you. And um, that is recognized in the repository that uh, uh, we are using. It means that uh, if one if one paper cites you, you have one citation. If 10 papers cite your, uh, your work, it means you have got 10 citations. It, it goes on and on. Then we can also use uh, the metric average citations. And these citation metrics um, are, are available within uh, uh, the different... Uh, 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 the, the different repositories like uh, like uh, our Scopus database uh, will have uh, this data for you. Then the citation and the publication related metrics, that is collaboration index, uh, collaboration coefficient, number of cited publications, proportion, and all these uh, are some of the performance analysis. So by using these performance analysis measures you can actually see which which uh, publications uh, how many publications in, in in that area the number of contributing authors uh, so so authors co-authored papers there are some who write on their own some will, um, uh, will co-author with other authors from different countries we want to make an analysis of all those then after having done that so some people would say, but why do we need to, 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 to look at this? Uh, for example, if you, if you go for a, top, a particular topic and you find that uh, you have got uh, 100 papers in that topic. So if you have got 100 papers in that topic and then you find that all the papers are from USA, USA, right? And some are from China, maybe uh out of the hundreds uh, normally let me just say out of the hundred maybe uh, 70 are uh, usa 30 are china right 
and other regions new. So what that means is uh, the topic you are studying has a gap because it has not been studied in all these, what you are calling other regions. So automatically you have come up with a what? With a gap. And some people uh, always wonder how gaps are, are established. Because when you do a bibliometric analysis, it will tell you where, where all the researches that you have found are coming from. So once that, te it, that tells you the, that story, it means that if you are in a particular region, for example, sub saharan Africa, you might find that uh, maybe you don't have the particular type of research that is being done. So you can argue that uh, although this research has been done in the USA and in China, this topic has not been uh, 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 dealt with in what in sub-Saharan Africa. At least according to your knowledge, because you have done a big analysis, you can support your argument. Then, uh, uh, yeah, so these are some of the examples why you would need to do a performance analysis. So you can actually come up with the geographical what gaps. So you can delimit your study to a particular gap or do a comparative study between China and the, and America. If these two uh, studies are not, um, have, if there has not been any comparative study between USA and China, then you, and you are based in China or USA, it means you can now uh, go further and say, okay, although the study was done in the United States and it was also done in China, but there is no comparative study between the two nations. And we know that China and the USA are, are very large trading partners. And of course, they always fight about the trade agreements and all that, but they are very uh, large trading partners among, between them, the two of them. So that means you have got a gap to do a comparative study. All right. Uh, do we understand that uh, on performance analysis? I'm just giving an example, but uh, there is quite a number of these metrics. We can see, you can uh, as we go, you will see how this will help us when we do the uh, the, the the actual bibliometric uh, uh, review. Right. So let's go to science mapping. Let's go to science mapping. Right, my apologies, colleagues. Uh, I'm at home, so baby was making noise in the kitchen. <laughs> right. Um. So we go to science mapping. So under science mapping, uh, we have such a actions like citation analysis, core citation analysis, bi bibliographic coupling core word analysis and core authorship analysis. So what is, uh, um, some of you might ask, ah, what is this and what is that? So citation analysis, we are simply studying relationship among publications, uh, most influential publications. So what happens is that uh, when a paper cites another paper, it, it's most likely that the theme is the same. It is most likely that the theme being studied is the same. Then uh, when it comes to core citation, uh, core citation, we are saying that uh, when two papers or more are cited in the same paper, then it is likely that these two papers have got the same theme. Do you understand, colleagues? Hello? Yes, I think I'm Yes, so I'm saying core citation. What it means is that when uh, the two papers are cited, 
uh, in the same uh, in the same paper. For example, John and uh, and uh, and uh, Grace are cited by my paper. The chances that those papers uh, have got the same theme, including together with my paper, they, they are very high. So it means whatever the topics are, we are likely to see the uh, the meaning or the theme that is coming out of those papers being the same. But we will do further analysis, like bibliographic coupling, relationship among citing publications, then periodical or present themes. So relationship among uh, citing publications, we are simply saying, if I am a paper that is going to cite the other paper, and then I find that in okay, you can just look at the, maybe the bibliograph of a paper, and say there is a, this paper has got two or three in its bibliograph. Whoever in their bibliography, it means that uh, has been cited by this paper, or two papers have cited the other two papers, a uh, different papers. Those two papers, for example, two papers that cite one paper you find them in the two papers you find one paper being cited by different paper two diff, two different papers it means that there is possibility also that the theme is the same but uh, do not worry much uh, i know it might be it might sound confusing when we start doing the practical thing you will start seeing what i'm talking about then uh, co-word analysis Co-word analysis, existing or future relationship among topics. So this will give us um, a, it, it gives us uh, the relationship amongst topics. It's when we have, uh, we do a co-word analysis, what we are simply saying is that uh, there is a possibility that uh, if we use the word uh, accounting and the word accounting has been used in another paper, or accounting education has been used in this paper, and it has also been used in that other paper. So what it means is probably that the authors are talking about accounting education. And if a, maybe a paper uses the term bibliometric analysis, and another paper uses again the word bibliometric analysis. So what it means is the probability that these two papers are talking about the same things are very high. So if we cluster them, these papers, they maybe there may be 10 or so out of the 200 papers that we are reviewing so it means that we are actually likely to get uh, uh, those 10 with the word bibliometric analysis talking about the same thing but of course we would want to go deeper and see if they are really talking about the same thing because one paper might be talking about bibliometric analysis in artificial intelligence and accounting research the other one might be talking about bibliometrics in uh, um, artificial intelligence and marketing Whilst the other one is talking about a bibliometric analysis in the medical field. So you can see uh, that uh, in as much as the words may be okay, but there's possibility also that uh, the word might actually uh, uh, confuse. So you need to go deeper. Uh, after having clustered, you now go to, to try and understand what the papers actually are studying. And then you uh, do a, a synthesis of uh, the the paper and come up with a, a, a more um, accurate position on the theme that is being what discussed. So probably this is why I, I've suggested that you can't just say, okay, I, I, I'm a believer of uh, bibliometric analysis. No, you might need to do a, a triangulation of the, met the three methods or combine the methods. Have, use, use the three of them. Use uh, or use two of them, bibliometric analysis and um, meta analysis, so that bibliometrics will do all these science mapping and performance analysis, and then your um your meta analysis will give you the the findings from the previous studies, and uh, possibly the new findings that you you could actually generate from uh, uh, the the interpret your own interpretation of the researches that you have gone through. Then you have got uh, co-authorship. So basically, these are the uh, the main issues that uh, we deal with when we are uh, talking about bibliometric analysis. 
and then uh, 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 clustering. This uh, can help us to do exploratory factor, factor analysis and hierarchical clustering. But today we are going to focus more on visualization, which we are going to use voice viewer. So these are the things I would then ask you to maybe go and read, but uh, uh, I don't think that there will be a very big problem. Uh, let me go to the next uh, slide. Uh, what's going on here? Right. So this is what I've been talking about. Uh, I've been discussing this, science mapping. Uh, again, let me acknowledge Dontu and Etau. They they did very well in um, studying this, uh, in giving us a, a guide to, to, to bibliometrics. So this procedure examines the relationship between the research constituents, that is science mapping. The analysis pertains to the intellectual interactions and structural connections among research constituents. So we are simply talking about these things that we've been talking about, citation analysis, core citation analysis, bibliometric coupling, I mean, bibliographic coupling, co-ed analysis, and co-authorship. Uh, so such techniques can, when combined with network analysis, are instrumental in presenting the bibliometric structure and the intellectual structure of research, of the research field. Um, so, as I was saying, if we look at uh, what citation analysis is, this is a basic te technique for science mapping that uh, operates on the assumption that citations reflect intellectual linkages between publications. So, this, uh, so by doing citation analysis, you are, you are saying that there should be a link between publications, um, intellectual linkages between publications, which means if the A is citing B, it means that there is a connection. The story is probably the same or it's in the same line. It might not be exactly the same, but uh, either they use the same methodology or they actually investigating the same problem or they are, they are using, uh, are investigating the same problem, but probably in different, using different methodologies. Are we clear on that one? So, uh, please let us let let's respond so that I I I know that uh, we are still in the uh, together because sometimes when I ask if we are clear it, I just want to confirm if people are still in uh, if I am still online and uh, if you are still online otherwise I'll just keep on uh, talking on my own so number of citations that uh, it receives so we are saying that uh, the impact uh, of uh, um, a research paper or any work, research work is seen by the number of citations that it receives. Uh, of what help is it to publish a paper that does not receive any citation? Colleagues, tell me. What does it mean in your own thinking? If you write a paper, uh, maybe you wrote it uh, five years ago, and it has got zero citations. What what could that mean? Given. Given are you there? Okay, Rosita. Uh, yes, Rosita. Uh, I think I. Uh, it means that. Uh, your your work your research or your work is not as uh, relevant to to the current circumstances. Right. Thank you very much. And it's a very good uh, answer because this is why you find that a certain analysis becomes a very important uh, tool to look at thematics the themes that are actually uh, uh, making making it uh in 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 research because if you have a, a publication and it's now reaching five years and no one is bothered to, to even cite it um so it's very difficult now to say to to take it as a serious uh, paper or a serious theme that is verging from there so I expect citations to come from papers um uh as uh 
showing you the impact of uh... so when uh, we then are certain most influential publish publications in a research field so from this we can see we can actually say maybe the most cited paper is being very influential in that particular field so you'll find that if you look at um, uh, those who do corporate governance you you find that there are authors like farmer and Jensen. Uh, then there are authors like Bell and, Men and Mins. I think they now have tens of thousands of citations. And we can't, uh, we can't really argue to say, ah, maybe they are just being favored by, but uh, what it simply means is that they, their publications are driving the research in that particular, uh, particular field or theory in that particular field. So th though there are a variety of methods to determine the importance of publications in the research field, the most objective and straightforward measure of its impact is its citations. So I, I'm not saying it on my own, but I'm talking about papers and uh, all these authors, Venus, they've uh, talked about it to say, no, uh, we can, the, the most objective is, is citations. If people are citing the paper, it means that it's of interest. If your paper is not being cited, it means the people, no one is interested in it. So we might be interested in uh, themes that are being cited more. So in terms, when you are looking now for uh, papers that to use in your own research, it means that you need to look for papers that are being cited. Don't just pick on a paper that has not been cited, the author is not known, no collaboration, no one. What it means is uh, your researches cannot sell uh, very far. It might sell just in your classroom with your lecture but uh, some lecturers won't even accept it. Because if, as long as your lecturer is uh, uh, up to scratch with the research uh, skills, uh, you'll find that they'll tell you that, uh, no, you can't be citing these uh, papers, these small papers from these predatory journals. You understand? So this is a way to pick the correct papers to use in your research. And the bibliometric analysis will also help you to, to find the themes in those papers. And if you then combine it with meta-analysis, you can actually find the, 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 the findings of that paper, of the papers that you are, uh, you, are, you are citing. Therefore, using citations, one can analyze the most influential publications in a research field to gain an understanding of the intellectual dynamics of that field. The next is core citation analysis. The technique use, uh, assumes publications assumes that publications are cited together frequently. Sorry, that this technique assumes that, uh, that publications cited together frequently are similar thematically. So what it means is, um, let us take for instance, you find the uh, I'm writing a paper on corporate governance. Then I cite the uh, those who do corporate governance will appreciate where I'm coming from. Uh, Bell and Mins, uh, Farmer and Jensen, uh, Jensen and Macklin. You find that these people are usually cited in in pep all papers that have got something to do with the uh, corporate governance. They usually do not ignore these authors. So what it means is that when these are cited by a paper, uh, you find that uh, you find the farmer and Jensen in this paper, and then uh, at the, in that same paper you also find there's Bell and Mins, and then in the same paper you find the Jensen and Macklin. Then you find another paper, you still find the three people are together. So this can tell you that uh, these these three guys they work on. Um, uh, on uh, agents theory so therefore it will be ideal to say ah, okay I, I i think that these papers are trying to address the agents theory can you understand where i'm coming from yes, yes. so in a core citation network two publications are connected when they okay in the reference list of another publication 
the benefit of using core citation analysis is that in addition to finding the most influential publications, business scholars can also di discover thematic clusters. You see what these thematic clusters are. In other words, what you're saying is that the papers that we are, we are talking about are papers that uh, have got uh, uh, are addressing the same theme, and we will be able to pick them as we uh, as we do the analysis. So once you pick those papers, they will show you the themes that, that this paper and this paper are likely to be doing the same theme. Then you go uh, inside the papers, then you check the abstracts and see if they are addressing the same theme. Then a bibliographic coupling. The assumption is that two publications sharing common references are also similar in their content. Right, remember I said that if I write a paper, then I cite Jensen and Meckling in my paper. And then um, uh, Rujidzo writes his paper and also cites Jensen and Meckling in his paper. Then uh, a technology writes his paper and also cites the same authors. So what it means is that there is probably something about the same authors, these authors, and the theme that they are uh, addressing. So here the thematic clusters are formed based on the citing publications. It means that the paper that is citing those ones is the one that assists us to come up with a theme, which means if we which means my paper and that of technology and that of Rigido, they are, uh, we are now saying that because these papers are citing the same authors in their references, it means that these three papers are likely to be addressing the same thing. Powered analysis. So we, we talked about these three other these three techniques, uh, which focused mainly on publications. But in this case, now the unit of analysis will be words. In other words, unlike citation analysis, core citation analysis and bibliographic coupling, which employs either cited or citing publications as a focal point or proxy, the core word analysis is a technique that examines the actual content of the publication itself. So now, after doing the core, the, the other uh, three techniques, you now want to actually investigate the words that are cited. So these words, uh, the, 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 the more these words are closer to each other, to, 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 the, their, to their meaning or whatever, uh, maybe if they are the same, then we assume that they are addressing a a, 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 a similar thematic relationship. So similar to core citation analysis, the core word analysis assumes that words that frequently appear together have a thematic relationship with one another. For example, you might find that when you are doing artificial intelligence and accounting research, you find that there is a, a machine learning and artificial neural networks. So they appear in the same paper, then they appear in another paper, and, and also, you know, something like that. So we expect that the theme that they are addressing is probably the same. So, but however, remember I talked about uh, the issue that there may be a challenge with uh, the interpretation of the meaning, because you don't really know. Uh, So that's the that's it. So I'm saying that you don't then need to go into the papers and read the papers. So and try to understand the theme for directly from the papers. So co-authorship. Uh, to examine the interactions among scholars in a research field. So we are saying that the is the more uh, scholars interact with each other or collaborate what means that they are probably discovering the same 
uh, the same uh, uh, themes. They are working on the same themes. Like, uh, because, you know, research now is becoming more complex. We probably want to study the impact of, uh, remember when I talked about uh, America and uh, China. So if somebody is going to uh, do a comparative analysis between China and America, it means they, uh, they may not do it whilst they're in China alone, or they may not do it whilst they're in America alone. So they would need uh, Chinese universities and American universities, or Chinese funders and um, chi uh, American funders. Then they collaborate and come up with a, a research. But when they collaborate, it means that uh, in those areas that they are collaborating, there's a probably that they are working on the, uh, these clustered regions are probably working on the same on the same themes. So, uh, techniques for science mapping. So, what happens is that uh, you need now to understand uh, these techniques. Uh, we've talked about them. So, this is just a summary. If you have got time, you just go and uh, look at this summary. Uh, then, the last part is the visualization. So, basically, the visualization is uh, to put into picture. Uh, the relationships, all these relationships that we have been talking about, you can actually see to say that ah, there's a relationship like this, there's a co-authorship, there's co-citation and all that. So now, um, I think I'm done with my slides. This is the process of bibliometric analysis. Yours, you define your aims and scope of bibliometric study, then choose the techniques for bibliometric analysis. So you choose between all those techniques that we've been discussing which one you want to do. And uh, as you go deeper into understanding this bibliometric analysis uh, te techniques, you will see which one is better for you, depending on your needs. Uh, then you collect the data for bibliometric analysis, run the bibliometric analysis, and uh, report the finding. So when you collect the data for bibliometric analysis, you also need to find to refine the data, uh, just like you do with other statistical analysis and you need to to work on your data and uh, make it you more usable uh, in uh, statistical analysis uh, before i proceed to start uh, with uh, the practical aspect i need to uh, hear if there are any questions The two percent, I think I can finish. Right, no questions. Colleagues, are we following or are we cannot? Uh, because there are two, there could be two reasons why people <laughs> just keep quiet. <laughs> uh, what's your reason? Is it okay? If people didn't understand. Okay, unmute, guys and talk to me. Esther. Hello, Joke. Good afternoon. Yes, good afternoon. <laughs> ah, I'm still trying to, to absorb and decipher everything. There are quite a lot of uh, gigantic words in the presentation. <laughs> no, don't worry about these big words. In the biggest word there was bibliometric analysis. Just take it as a quantitative way of what? Of doing a, a review. Don't worry about those big words. Co-word, co-citation. When we start doing the practical part, you will just see that it's just nothing. Chiedza? Chiedza, are you on, online? I'm still digesting. Yes, yeah, okay. I'm here. Any question? I'm still digesting. Ah, okay. Liberty. And not at the moment. Yeah, I'm I'm following Doc. Ah, all right. Thank you so much. So still I will in the ask... process of understanding. Ah, all right. It's all right. It's all right. So let's go to the practical part. That's the most exciting, right? <laughs> <laughs> I know people just love pra practicals. Because practicals sometimes they make your life very easy. Mm. So those who are on their computers, let's go to our 
Scopus database. This real person. Okay. Are we on our Scopus database? Hello? Colleagues, do we have our computers? Fungai, do you have your computer? So, uh, sorry, to, uh, not at the moment, not at the moment. Okay, who, has com who, has co who are using computers? I know Mary is using a computer. Liberty. All right, guys, I think in next time when you come, um, have computers. Yeah. Please, have computers next time when you come, right? Are we together? Not Let's the tech, well. not the technos, well. not the technos, because we want to do practical things. Okay. Yes, sir. So now we are starting bibliometrics, and it's a very simple process. Please just uh, relax. Uh, I I did a test run just before the lecture to see if my machines were working. But what I did was um, I, I, I my, my field of research is uh, artificial intelligence accounting and, uh, and accounting education. So in fact, it's artificial intelligence and accounting. So it can be accounting education, accounting practices or whatever. So what I, I, I want to do here is to do a bibliometric analysis of uh, papers that have been written in this area. So first, what I do, I just think because it's a research area that I've been trying to work on, right? So I know what artificial intelligence, that if one of my constructs is artificial intelligence. You remember the issue about constructs? Do you remember that? Researchers, do you remember constructs? Yes, too. Yes. So I'm saying my research area is I'm focusing on these transformative information technologies and accounting, which one of the those is artificial intelligence. So I know that uh, obviously uh, I will find some papers that are that have got a keyword artificial intelligence, and I'll also find a paper that has got accounting, and uh, probably I'll find a paper that has got accounting education or education, right? I may also find a paper that has got in, what else? Uh, help me. Uh, uh, on a research, uh, account, uh, artificial intelligence, accounting research, what else? Machine learning, right? You know machine learning? Colleagues, do you know what machine learning is? This is a subset of uh, artificial intelligence. No. Yes. Then the uh, artificial neural networks. Artificial neural 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 neural. Uh -uh. What's happening? My way, the, my spelling here is what? It's supposed to be. Okay, let me just stop there. I will not say. Uh, uh, neural networks. What's wrong with this spelling? Right. So I've added some, uh, before I did this uh, 
I just tested on three uh, keywords. So now I'm going to test on uh, these uh, eight, these keywords. So I'm searching now. Can you see what I'm doing? Uh, I think there is a problem with my it, I have to re-sign in. Can you? Right. So now it is done, the re-signing. So which means we have to start again. Because the original, this is the original search. But I want to use a new search. Uh, we say, the, let's change this to accounting education. Education. We can also use... Uh, Accounting curriculum. Curriculum. Then we can use machine learning. Machine learning is a branch of artificial intelligence. So it might be discussing machine learning and accounting education, something like that. Or a robotic automation processes. These are all branches. But let's just search with this, these uh, words. So what has happened here is we have searched and we found only one, one paper, which is the strategic transformation of accounting into learning the profession. So probably uh, it, there's something wrong with our search. So we need to change. Let's remove machine learning. We just remove machine learning. Remember how to get this. We get this from some of the papers. Like, for example, if we open this paper, which has just come out, we can find the keywords that were used there. And then we add them. We try to search and try to get more papers. So let's try. We have removed one word. So you see, we have added. We have now 12, 12 papers. You see that? So when we do the search, now we are, the first paper says integrating artificial intelligence into the accounting curriculum. Then the other one says blockchain business analy data analytics and artificial intelligence use, use in the accounting profession and ideas for inclusion into the accounting curriculum. So you can see that all the papers here are discussing almost the same theme. Accounting curriculum, accounting education, accounting curriculum. Can you see that? Yes. Then uh, embracing emerging technologies and artificial intelligence into undergraduate uh, accounting curriculum, reflections from the United Arab Emirates. You see, so when we tell people that we need to include artificial intelligence in the accounting programs, some people think that it's just a joke. It's coming from science. People have done researches. The evolution of accounting technology education analytics uh, to STEM. Okay, teaching advanced data analytics, robotic automation process, and artificial intelligence to uh, in an in a graduate accounting program. So you can see that these themes are now coming out. So maybe we can remove, uh, to increase the, our, number, our number of papers, we can remove what? Um, maybe, maybe let's remove accounting. No. Accounting curriculum or accounting education. Let's remove accounting education. Because we have seen that these papers like to use accounting curriculum. So we've added just a, a few more papers. You can see. But if we then remove um, accounting, uh, accounting curriculum and leave it like that, artificial intelligence and accounting. You see, if we just leave uh, this uh, to artificial intelligence and accounting research, we have uh, 314 documents. So all these documents have got something to do with artificial intelligence and accounting. But uh, what we want to do is, in our search, we want to limit, because we have so many papers, so we can't study all of them. We want to reduce them probably to just 100 papers. But for purposes of the um, 
a bibliometric analysis, if these are 314, there are how many? 314. Yeah, usually, the recommendations are that you study between 300 and, uh, and 500 papers. It will be okay. So we can just leave them like that. And then we started the process. But if you've got maybe 2,000 papers or so, you can come and do the limits here. You remember those limits I said, I talked about. You can eliminate some of the papers by restricting. Ah, okay, this is, this search is actually restricted to business only. If we include uh, economics, this one, you see, let's include these ones. Computer science, decision science, social sciences, and just leave uh, this one. Uh, do you see what I'm trying to do? Yes. Right. I'm trying to... Yes. You will see that they should increase these papers. You see now we've got 1,463 documents. So, because we have now added uh, uh, these other uh, type of journals in the only excluded engineering, but you can come here and they also limit and remove those conference papers. If you remove the conference papers, you will see what happens there. We drop 700, so we've got 710. So these are now, uh, let's see, they are now, uh, let's see, I think they are still books. Conference reviews out. And book chapters out. Reviews. Okay, let's leave review retracted. So we say exclude so that we only remain with journal articles that have been reviewed scientifically. So you can see now we have 594 papers, which is we can now proceed to do our analysis. When we are here now, uh, what we do is if you want to use all of them, we select all, all the papers. And please follow this, follow this uh, process religiously. Then we go to export. So we want to export a CSV file. A CSV file is almost like an Excel file, which will have all this information, citation information, Bibliographical information, and we, we keep all this, this information. Now, we should now export this. When we click export, it will be stored somewhere. This file will be stored somewhere in a format that is read by a voice viewer. Are we together? Yes, stop. Right. So up to this stage, what we have simply done is we have extracted these 594 papers. Yes, that, do. And we don't know yet what is in these papers, but we just know that these papers are talking about artificial intelligence and accounting research. We are together, right? So now, this data, you can see that we have got uh, for the, it means that I've worked on bibliometrics before. So I've saved. So when we are opening, remind me that we are supposed to open file number four. Okay. So we now have the bibliometric data for all these files. Right. So now since we've got... Uh, uh, bibliometric data for all these files, we can now start uh, to do uh, our analysis using uh, using um, using voice viewer. Oh, my battery is low. No, this, uh, everywhere. There's no this even here where I am. 
I was lucky that I managed to to charge my laptop. Uh, it's now on 47%. I think we can continue. My network is bad. I keep on jumping out due to poor network. You get the video. So it's all right. We are saving the video. Right. So we have successfully saved our, exported our data. So now let's go to uh, I want to share a different, a different screen. Right, I think you can now see a different screen. Yes, Doc. Yes, yes. Right, so this different screen, what you do is you just search for voice viewer and online and voice viewer can, um, can give you, uh, it's, it's for free. So it gives you instructions on how to 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 actually install it, and uh, when you install it, you will get to uh, this section. It will be blank. It will be blank. So when it's blank, you come here and you say create. So when you click on create. What it means is it, it, it you, you can see this screen. That's what comes out. So here you must choose create a map based on bibliographic data. Because we saved the bibliographic data, you remember? So yes. it says choose this option to create co-authorship. Keyword, co-word. A co-occurrence citation bibliographic covering or co-citation map based on bibliographic data. Right. So this is what we are interested in. Please don't for now, because you are new to this, don't be interested in anything else. Just go straight there. Right. Then after that, you click next. So when you get to this uh right when you get here it says read data from bibliographic data base files supported types web of science scopus dimensions lens and pubmed for us we have access only to the scopus database but this is probably the largest, largest database. But Web of Science is good for comparatives and PubMed is more of a medical science uh, journal. So it means if you are doing uh, studies that are related to medical science, you need to find access to the PubMed database Dimensions is also another, but this one is the main for social science, for, yeah, the scientific, some scientific journals. It has got lots of, uh, for, of research. It's run by Elzevia. So once you have done that, uh, let me wrap off this so that you can see clearly. You are going to choose read data from bibliographic data files supported by this because ours is Scopus. Then I'll click next. So when you come here, you see it's you most of the times it will be the on, on web of science. So you come here and choose Scopus because our database is Scopus that we want to use. So we then, uh, you see this, these little buttons there. So you are going to look for CSV, for, so Scopus 4, that's file number four. That's the one we just saved and click okay. So we click next.
Mind you, what we did not do is the process of cleaning the data. Because you also need to go back to the data, it will be in Excel format, and make sure that everything is aligning. You remove data, data that has got uh, missing, uh, some missing uh, information. So when you come here now, this is where you are going to choose what you want to do. Maybe you want to do co, a uh, co-authorship uh, by authors, co-authorship by organizations, co-authorship by countries. So for this research, out of interest sec, right? Let's do co-authorship by countries. What it means is we want to see which countries are collaborating more on this particular research. So now we, we do co-authorship by countries and we go next. So this is the minimum number of documents of a country. So what this means here is that it's going to recognize all countries that have got only five co-authored uh, publications. For countries that have got four or less, they will not be recognized in this analysis. Minimum number of citations of a country. Uh, we also want to limit, maybe some, some have been co-authored, but they have got no citations. So we might not need them. We might say maybe one citation, or we might say two, or three, or four something like that. So let's leave it at uh, maybe start with uh, no citations. Then we click enter. Number of countries to be selected. For each of the 35 countries, the total strength of core links will be calculated. The countries with the greatest total link strength will be selected. So we then click there. So you can see from this that based on core citations, uh, the United States is topping, followed by the United Kingdom, followed by China. So let us finish this analysis and visualize. <laughs> hey. If you had checked the details there, uh, let's start from here. Network visualization. So you see this has got different colors. You can see the different colors. It means that the, 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 the blue, this one, this blue here with the United States can tell you which countries the United States is collaborating with. And the size of the bubble is largest for the United States. And if you checked on the citations, you also saw that the United States is doing very well in this kind of research. And it's followed by the United Kingdom, right? This one. And then it's followed by China. So the bubble sizes, I think this one maybe it's because of the view that uh, but the bubble size should show us the, the, which one is doing better than the other. So the colors here are clusters of collaboration. If you check, uh, even if you check your researches, you will see that uh, there is a high probability that China will, col uh, will collaborate with Japan, Vietnam, India. And what, which country is this? South Korea, yes. And in Pakistan, more than some of these countries like South Africa, you can see probably there's, there's not even collaboration between China and South Africa from the data that we got. And we don't even see an African country there, which means when you deal with this kind of research, uh, if you study the relationship between China and uh, an African country, it means you have broken a, 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 a new area or in, into the research. It's the first of its kind in this, at least based on the 500 and 
something articles that we are studying. Do we get it, colleagues? Yes, Doc. Right. Then we come here. You can see also the United States. I don't see any African country. So which means that there is purely no collaboration between African countries and, uh, and, and, uh, and the United States, at least from these papers that we have, that we have reviewed. So automatically, when you are now arguing for your gap and the reason why you should study that area, it means that from the papers that you are going to take, you can argue that based on the based on previous research, this particular research area has not been studied. Because you now have evidence. We have got 500 papers, but you can see now it is only the United Kingdom. Can you see that? Which means you can't do a comparative analysis between the United Kingdom and and South Africa, because there is this uh, uh, this bubble, and there is this uh, line which is uh, generally uh, thick. It's generally thick. It means that there is uh, quite a number of uh, there might be some uh, quite a number of articles there between the UK and uh, and the uh, South Africa. But from the sub-Saharan African point of view, you can argue to say that it's only South Africa. So probably there is no research like that in Zimbabwe. There is no research like that in Zambia. There is no research like that in what in Mozambique or something like that. This is how we build our arguments for purposes of uh, the research gaps. So you can see we can change the visualizations, and uh, what this tells you is the yellow bubble here. The yellow tells you that this these are current col collaborations. These papers are current and these collaborations are very current. As you can see here, it's a saying 2022. Uh, can you see what I'm talking about? Yes, Doc. Yellow here is 20, for 2022. Then the green like blue, this one, China is for 2020. So you find that the collaborations between Vietnam and China are very current. And then the these co these collaborations here with Saudi Arabia they are very current, which means that the issue of collaborations is actually growing now. It is starting to emerge because the numbers are increasing. But if you check this one with South Africa, it happened. It last happened a long time ago. It's a long time ago now. There is not much that is happening currently, which means we need something new. To do with this particular topic. So we are building our arguments. You don't need to uh, search uh, to, to, to crack your head about how you build gaps. It's very hot. <laughs> right. Then you can use the density visualization. So you can see the denser this color you can see here. It also shows that there is high collaboration. Now, let us go to the other part. Because I want to finish. I'm not going to finish everything. But what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm going to, I don't think we're even going to have time for discussions because I can see I'm now running on, uh, you can see I have 35, 34%, right? So we are running out of power. Um, so we are going to go back there and say create. So we are going to create a different analysis. So we still say create a map based on bibliometric data, uh, bibliographic data. And here we select Web of Science and uh, we select Scopus. Then um, here we select Scopus, sorry. And then we choose our file. Then uh, we go to next. So now let's go to co-occurrence.
co-occurrence or keywords, right? So let's move. Right, so here we say the minimum number of occurrences of a keyword. We want to use, uh, when you see when we selected this, uh, firstly, let's use the minimum that they've just given us there. So of the 4,844 keywords that are provided in these researches, 193 keywords meet this threshold. If we change here, you'll see this part changing. So if we increase, you see this number has gone down. If we increase, this number will also go down. If we reduce, you can see. If we go to zero, then it will be equal. So in other words, what is saying that we have got 4,844 keywords and all of them should be recognized. But because we can't analyze all those, we need to reduce them. Let's maybe start with the analyzing just 100 keywords. So, which is a minimum, they should be seven. These keywords should appear seven times, at least. Now, you can see the word that is appearing more is what? Artificial intelligence. Then there's a word article. Then human algorithms, machine learning. So some of these things, like article, they will be eliminated when you are sorting your data. Algorithm, decision making, learning systems, pattern recognition, automated what what, and all these. So there are so many of these words, and there are actually hundreds. So when we click finish, let's see. Start with this. This map here. Can we all see this map? Hello? Yes, I can. So the larger the size of this map, the high it means that that's how the that's the most prominent keyword in all these researches. So you can see from this without even uh, uh, without even cracking your head, you can see artificial intelligence machine learning, forecasting, human article, accounting, cost accounting, decision support systems, decision making, you see. But you can see that uh, there is here, you can see algorithm, right? And here you can see, this is algorithms and this is algorithm. So what you can do is that when you are sorting your data, if you see a word like uh, algorithm, you have to uh, unify this algorithm and algorithms. So they become one, one word because they are the same. Then you also go to maybe a accounting education. Accounting education, uh, maybe and what? I wanted to find out some words that are almost the same. You see, there's this one also, genetic algorithm. You see, it's all about algorithms. This is about algorithms. This is about algorithm. So we can combine some of those. And when we combine them, they reduce the numbers. So you can even check from here that in 2020, 2020 these are the words that are in this in yellow, they are the burning issues. These are the current issues, current research issues. Then you can also use density visualization, right? So having said this, there is one unique thing about uh, this map here. Okay, let me try to reduce this map to make it uh, more usable. Because then we have got too many numbers, too many words there. So let's reduce then the words. All right. Let's reduce the words.
Maybe we leave them. We leave them at 45. Then we click finish. Right. So you can see our map here is much more clear because we have reduced the number of what? Of keywords. But what is important is for us to see the relationships that are being formed. So each time you see the link between accounting, education, and artificial intelligence, it means that that area is being researched. Can you see that? But if you come to this one, you can see that accounting education uh, and probably um, there is no link. Let's see. It doesn't look like there is accounting education and big data. Can you see that? There is no link, at least from these researches. But you can only do that if you have cleaned your data properly so that you see whether there is no a uh, substitute for the word big data or a substitute for the term accounting education when you are cleaning your data so that you can see that if there is no link between accounting education and big data it means that that is a gap in research do you understand what i'm saying yes Joe. so what yes, you will sir. say what you will say in your analysis when you are discussing the gate that there is no, you are the first to do the research between accounting education and what big data. You will discuss the papers that are in this theme, which is this red theme here, which is showing you that big data and accounting, big data and blockchain, big data and internet of things, big data and auditing. You are telling us that the uh, Author A studied the relationship between big data and accounting or the impact of accounting on big data or the impact of whatever, right? Then they also studied big data and sustainability. But overall, they, according to our knowledge, these studies, have no, none of these studies have looked at the, the relationship between uh, all the developments between big, big data and what? Accounting education. Is that clear? Yes. So yeah. these, these themes here, you can see that if you look at this uh, uh, artificial intelligence, which is it's a red, there's a theme, there's a red theme. You can see that there's a red uh, the thematic cluster. Then there's a yellow thematic cluster. Then there's a green, then there's a blue. So you can see that uh, if you check these papers in green, they are discussing almost the same thing. So you would need to identify these papers, which are these papers in this uh, green. They, have, they are studying human, humans, algorithm, automated patterns, sensitivity, methodology, whatever. So you need to identify which are these papers forming this theme and you and you go deeper, try to find out what is it they are discussing and try to find out their findings. And they, the, therefore, when you are finding out their findings, then it means you are developing uh, the, 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 your, your, your paper in a, in a very systematic way. Uh, so let's look at uh, this one. This one is artificial intelligence. What about this one? Right, cost accounting, expert systems, decision support systems, mathematical models. Uh, yeah, so the, this is blue, is it blue? Yeah, this looks like blue or purple. Yeah, this blue is another theme, another thematic cluster. Ah, no, this, for this one, this is a year cluster. It means that this one, uh, is, is, is these studies are a bit old, the ones with paper, but the ones with uh, uh, you can see that when you are talking about sustainability, sustainability is a very modern, uh, it's a very latest uh, research topic. Uh, we just have we, we just had uh, a few months ago 
the launch of sustainability standards. You can see that there's a link between sustainability and accounting and sustainability, artificial intelligence and accounting. So, which means that uh, if you see the yellow ones, it will help you to pick which are the latest topics that are being studied. So in other words, what we are going to do is when we do further search, we we'll then look for sustainability, accounting, blockchain, artificial intelligence, machine learning as the keywords that will further refine our, our study, our bibliometric study on sustainability in accounting. So you can do a density visualization. Right. So you can do quite a number of these uh, uh, checks. And uh, but I want you to go uh, to, 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 to uh, I would refer you maybe to do a, a bibliometric uh, study on a, on a particular area. Uh, as your exercise you should go. I'll send it uh, to you through tomorrow. But uh, before I, I close, I want you to uh, Let's go to, I want to you to, uh, let's see. I want you to, make sure that you have got end notes. End notes is a citation, a reference citation and a citation, a, um software and not can you hear me yes sir uh, if you don't know how to if you don't know how to to get it we will discuss it on, on the whatsapp group okay yeah you need to uh, to install and not but how does EndNote help us? You see, I've seen quite a number of people struggling to, 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 to do citations, right? So most people, when they are writing their research, doing their research, <laughs> they write like what we used to do. You know, when I went to school a few years back, I think some of you, I'm not sure how old you are, but some of you were quite young when I went to school. Uh, we used to write bi uh, bibliographical data on cards. <laughs> you know, uh, it was a quite bo a boring exercise. You gave some cards. So each time you go to the library, you write the bibliographical data on that card and you keep the in your file until you finish your dissertation. But these days, all your library can be uh, in your uh, referencing software. So what it means is, let's start here. Let's go back to, let's go back to our Scopus so that you see. Where... So you see here, we, we, we exported, right? So when we export here, we want to send our 594 documents to EndNote. So we just click here. What is it that we want in terms of citation information? We just want this citation information. We want the authors, right? The document title, year, uh, this one we don't need source title volume yes citation count no source document type yes publication stage no digital object identifier yes so, some researchers are demanding toys this is called the digital object identifier so when you do that, because here, this is different from the file that we sent for analysis. This is a, a, a file for bibliographic data, which is going to the EndNote library. Are we together? So we export. Yes. So you can see I'm exporting the documents, 594 
documents to to the EdNot library. Right. So then my documents have come. If I go there to check, they should be showing. Already I have got all my bibliographical data in my library, and not library. How sweet is that? <laughs> okay, I think it's open already. The library is open. Right, you can see, the, you can, can you see the documents? Can you see the library? Yes, sir. You see the 594? Yes. So I already have them in my library. So I want you to keep a, a one name that you can see here so that we use it to cite. So let's cite with with which one? Aljaidi, right? Aljaidi. Right, so we come here now. You want to start typing and you go according. According to, you then come here. You just click and set citation. In fact, before you do that, uh, you'll be, the screen will be like this. Then you have to find your, can you see this screen? Where I'm typing? Yes, sir. The word document, you can see it? Yes. Ah, good. So, you can see where I'm clicking end note, right? Yeah. Yes. So, you then come here, uh, and then you choose. It is updated. So, we choose our jar, something like, it's like this, right? I yes. think there was in double I or something. Right, this one. You see? Mm -hmm. Then we click. So what this has done is it has already cited my it has already done the citation inside text, right? And given us the bibliometric and uh, the, the bibliograph. Can you see that? Then we type what we want, right? We go on. After typing all this, then we want to add another author. We just come here again. Then we choose the author that we want because we will be knowing these authors because we will have taken note of them, right? Then we put the name of the other author. So you can see Davis has been added there including their bibliograph. We don't need their bibliograph anyway. So we can delete the bibliography. I mean, the, what do you call, this is abstract. So you can see that uh, in inside the text, I have cited this one and this one, and already I have an automatic what? Bibliograph. So you cannot miss any author you have cited. Do you understand now? Hello, colleagues. Hello. Yes, talk. Yes, talk. Yes. So, colleagues, my battery here is only seventeen percent. So, what it means is we cannot continue. Because if I continue, I will not be able to save this. Uh, and I think I've done justice for what I wanted to do today. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you an exercise where I would want you to do a bibliometric analysis in a particular topic. And then uh, the, this bibliometric analysis, you are only going to use it as a tool to do a gap analysis for your topic. Oh, no, no. Do you understand what I'm saying? Oh, no, no. Yeah, no. Hello?
Hello? Okay, so I'm saying that you are only going to use you are only going to use the bibliometric analysis to do a gap analysis and a preliminary literature review. Because what you want to do is to screen in your particular topic, you are going to screen unnecessary papers using bibliometric analysis. It means you are only going to work with the most relevant authors, the most relevant papers, the most cited papers. You work with those ones, the most current papers. So you either use the current, most relevant papers, most cited papers, you understand? Yes. So, so thank you very much. I, I want to stop here so that I can save the uh, I can save this uh, this video. Enjoy the rest of your uh, day and uh, this coming week. All right. Thank you so much, too. Okay. Thank you so much, too. Thank you so much, too. Welcome. Okay.